Now I know that some people would want to enhance their videos um, through PowerPoint and you could also use videos to enhance PowerPoint itself so if you wanted to do a presentation it's quite simple to insert a video it's, it's not really that hard so I'm going to create a new slide and after I created my new slide all I did was just had one of these slides here highlighted and then hit enter on the keyboard and then a new slide popped up and now I have slide 9 uh, you see inside of this slide I have have the basic gen generic template format so we have our text box which also can act as a placeholder for inserting pictures, clip arts, uh, charts, smart arts, columns and tables as well as media clips. So how do you insert a video clip? Quite simple. Uh, once you create a new slide you could simply just click on the insert media clip from this template and you'll be able to browse for your video selection that you want to use. Um, templates, of course, they're different for each one. So if I click somewhere outside uh, of the text box area, somewhere out here, around it, uh, right click on that and then a drop down menu will appear. And I'll be able to look through the various office themes that are available. Um, if I choose blank, of course, I'm not going to be able to insert media the way that I just showed you. However, if I go to the insert tab at the top here, and then mouse over to the video icon inside of the ribbon for insert. If I click on the video icon itself, it will immediately bring up the browse menu. However, if I click on the drop down arrow, that gives me a couple extra options. So I have three different ones. I could either choose a video from a file, which is somewhere on my computer, which will allow me to do two things. If I click on this, I have two different methods of inserting a video. I could either embed my video, which if I just click insert on a video that I'm selecting, so I'll go to videos and I'll choose one of the sample WMV files, which is the wildlife video that comes with all Windows 7 operating systems. If I click on that and choose insert, then that video becomes embedded onto my PowerPoint slide, which means that I could carry this PowerPoint anywhere and this video should be able to play as long as I'm using Office 2010 on some of the other computer I'm located at. Um, that's fine and dandy, but let's say that you happen to go to a machine that is on Office 2007. Well, you have run into a problem. Or let's say that they don't have Office 2010 um, or Office 2007 and they're using something completely different. Um, so. It, you might run into that issue as well and that's why making the, uh, this as a video would work fine um, but let's say you want to instead of embed a video you want to insert uh, the video from file again but then instead you choose right here in the insert area there's drop down menu click on it and you'll see two different options there's insert and link to video file so link to file and what essentially will happen is when you link to file, it in, does not embed the video file onto your PowerPoint. What it will do, however, it, it still is a quick link, so any time that you want to access that video, you could. However, you've got to be very certain that you have that video file on your jump drive along with your PowerPoint. If you forget that that video file is there, then that video file is not going to be able to be transferred and onto a different computer because it's going to query wherever that file was uh, pulling from. So if I had this file pulled from this computer um, from its video files folder, so if I go to insert video from file, notice how I'm in the directory libraries, videos, public's videos, sample videos. So it's pulling straight from this directory where this is located on the C drive of this specific computer. It's pulling that data from there. If I go to a different machine, it's not going to pull it from that machine's uh, file structure. So I have to make sure that this file is saved on my jump drive where my same PowerPoint is being saved at. And I got to make sure that it's also querying or pulling from that file. So if I'm going to link my videos, 
I would want to make sure I'm linking from a video that's on the same file structure that I know will be able to be carried over to someone else's computer. All right. So you got to keep that in mind. However, it's beneficial to link your videos if you want to save space on your PowerPoint. Uh, otherwise, you want to instead embed your video forms uh, formats into PowerPoint to be able to store your data um, and not have to carry that data around on your jump drive. So let's say you've embedded your videos. Congratulations, you got that taken care of. Now, after you do so, uh, one of the steps that you want to take care of before doing anything after you embedded your video or uh, you transferred it and linked it, um, you want to make sure that your media is optimized. So I'm going to click on File here, and when I do, I'm brought to a Backstage menu system. Inside this Backstage menu system, we have many different options. The one that automatically is, is selected is Info, for my case. Info will bring you to more information about your PowerPoint, your presentation. And the information I see here um, is optimizing my media compatibility, which what it essentially will do in this section, if I click on this icon, Optimize Compatibility, is exactly what it says. Uh, it will optimize the compatibility of the video files. So I click on that item, and you'll see that it's starting to process these different video formats and what is it what is it doing it's reducing the size of it um, so that it can be more um, more easily translated on any device this is also something you want to do before you actually make your video um, from PowerPoint so if you're planning on taking your PowerPoint presentation and making it more than just a PowerPoint presentation and putting it up as a video, you want to optimize your compatibility. And that essentially is all that's necessary.